like follow you the normal guidelines because like we have um pretty like standard media training i guess like riot yeah. really encourages their uh, employees to like talk, like post on reddit reply to players and so like That's good. we have to go through this training to make sure that we aren't idiots when we do that yeah for sure yeah, yeah. no it's awesome we uh we hit up uh who was G Fuel and the the social media guy from G Fuel was just like, now nah, we're good. I was like, oh come on, man. <laughs> oh. One day, one day, we'll get him on here. We just have to get big enough, and then we'll be good. For- Dude, right. look, at, look at Whopper's question. <laughs> you want to get going? Oh, we got going. Yeah, I was waiting for him to get, get have a gotcha moment. There's no gotchas. We're all we're all. You always get got. My, the story of my life, dude. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Overachievers Gaming Podcast. I am your host, Vash, a.k.a. Charlie, joined, as always, by the infamous deli meat himself, Dami Ashi Pastrami, and Chef Crondo along uh, down in Florida, or Florida, right? Florida? Is that what you guys have? Uh, it's it's Florida. 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 It's also called uh, the cesspool of America. I'm sorry. No, yes, the, the uh, New Jersey and the South. If you, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I guess if anybody hasn't seen the Tiger King episode on Netflix, that's basically everybody that I live by. So, you know, that's yeah, that makes, in that that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you haven't seen that, that's a fantastic look into what life's like when uh, you have too much access to meth. That's great. quality <laughs> family entertainment. <laughs> Indeed. And speaking of family entertainment, uh, joining us, us this week is my cousin, Neil. How's it going, Neil? Neil Hello. works for, uh, Riot Games, and he just and he agreed to come talk to us about his involvement in working for that company, uh, as well as uh, past stuff as well. So, how's it going, Neil? Thanks for joining yeah, us. It's going great. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Hell yeah, dude! Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. So, why don't uh, before we get into like your background and whatnot, uh, you got everybody here can follow us on Instagram at og podcast or twitter is overachievers p our website is beingoverachiever.com dot com where you can get this episode and every episode where we talk about deli meat i don't know where i'm going with this i never have i never i always prepare to have something quippy but i never have anything ready to go that's because quips are supposed to be done at the last minute and considering your wife is the mass the mistress well actually she'd be the mass mistress she be, she's like the no. ultimate master of quip yeah, she's, so, i mean she's the best she um, dominated she, she yeah she yeah kicked all our asses in the jackbox party that chat that we did so what's actually worked out really well with thanks to uh to dines for get, coming in and giving us a raid of like 150 people that, that night. Awesome. So that was a yeah, Mallory's much, much 11 custom uh, 11 year old cousin beat us last night in a mobile Jackbox party game. So uh, I'm still I'm still feeling the hurt from that one. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's uh, great. We're also we also do this um, this podcast live as we record it on Twitch, and you can follow that at twitch.tv slash og podcast. And that you know you whenever you just you know subscribe to us not subscribe follow us that's the word i'm looking for so you can can, yes subscribe please we are we are affiliate now so we are working on that so you if you want you can follow give us your money and you can follow us and hit that notifications and you'll know whenever we go live Uh, you can also join our discord which will also tell everybody when whenever we're live or any of us are streaming because that's all we can do now is this podcast and stream so there's probably going to be a lot of these episodes coming out in the uh near future so we'll see what happened? Why, you don't got some place to be or something? I ain't got nothing to do, man. I have absolutely nothing to do. Oh, let me let me check with my cat real quick and see if I'm <laughs> able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, Neil, give us a little bit of uh, a background. Um, I mean, I know your background story, but I guess everybody else doesn't really know. So tell us like, how you got into gaming, where you came from, what led you to work at Riot Games. And your position. Yeah. What you, what oh, you do okay. Yeah. okay. Well, if I miss anything, remind me. Uh, let's see. Uh, when I was like seven years old, my parents made the mistake of buying me an N64 without me asking. And then I got hooked yeah. up video games ever since. Um, like as a kid, like I got like pretty good grades, but I wasn't sure like what I wanted to do. I really just didn't have an idea. I was like, oh, it'd be cool to make video games. It would, but like that sounded about as realistic as like being like a pro tennis player, you know? 
Um, <laughs> like, I just like didn't think that that was a real job that people could have. Um, and then when I was in high school, um, I like subscribed to Game Informer magazine, and I, there was an article wow. about like going to school and majoring in computer science games uh, at USC, and I was like, "Holy crap! Like that's yeah. something you can actually do." Uh, at the same time, I was lucky enough that my high school had a computer science class, so I was able to try it. Found it out. Found out I love it. And in about the course of like two months, I went from having no idea what I wanted to do with my life to having a complete idea with what I wanted to do. And I've kind of like followed that path uh, for the most part. Um, went to USC, majored in computer science games. Um, my first job was at like a small game studio. Um, as what typically happens to small game studios, uh, that got shut down and they laid everyone <laughs> off. Um, and then like I, I floated around. I was at Facebook for a short period of time. And then uh, Riot swooped me up to work on uh, Legends of Runeterra, which is my current job. So. I am a gameplay engineer, um, which when you think of like what uh, software engineers do on a video game, I think what most people think about is my job. When in reality, the majority of engineers are building things that have like nothing to do with like the, the actual like when you're playing cards in Legends of Runeterra sure. or like when you're attacking with champions in League of Legends. Like that's like ten percent of all of the engineers that are working on the product. Um, hmm. So yeah, like I work directly with the design team. So our game designers decide like these are the kind of cards we're gonna make. These are like the regions that we're gonna have. These are the deck building rules, and then it's like my team's responsibility to try to work with them to make that a reality. So we do we build a lot of the tech, and then we also uh, make a lot of tools to make it easier for designers to be able to like build it themselves without needing to involve an engineer. Well, that's pretty awesome. That was, that was a really good description of all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I uh, I had a very brief. This is a, a, a funny, stupid story. When I uh, the, when the movie Grandma Boy Grandma's Boy came out. Oh yeah, uh, great movie. Yeah, whenever absolutely. whenever that was. What year? I need to look what, what year that was real quick. That, that must mattered. have been like two thousand six, two thousand seven. I want to so say. So Grandma's Boy came out in two thousand six. I was graduating high school. I graduated high school in two thousand seven. And I, I saw that movie. I let, I was already into video games, but I never really, for some reason, it never clicked for me to try to like get into making video games. Uh, but in my high school, if you did well in certain courses like social studies or history or that stuff, they let you take they let you take electives. Like sure, they had electives, which was pretty wild. I, I didn't know many other schools that did that, but our school had computer programming, so I, I took Java in C++. There was two classes each, intro and then advanced. And I got out and Grandma's Boy just came out. I saw that. I was like, let's go. Let's make video games. And then I got to college and I started doing computer programming and I was like, let's not do video <laughs> games. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, it was, uh, man, it was, it was, I, I was like, oh, I, I, math, what's, what's that? What does that have to do with making video games? And then it's just like formula, 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 like whatever. And I was like, oh, never mind. Yeah. I'm done with this. I'm over this. That's actually the reason I didn't get into game. Like, I, I had a turning point in my life where I was like, well, I was 300 pounds. I lost 125. I could be a personal trainer. I'm decent at cooking and I love playing video games. And I'm like, okay, being a personal trainer, not for me because people are lazy and it just sucks. <laughs> and then it was like, well, I'm good at cooking, but I'd love to get into video games. And then I went to like the art institute and they were like, yeah, so uh, what are your like, uh, what's your like math aptitude? And I'm like, uh, not good, not good <laughs> at all. Like I'm not smart. So they were like, yeah, this is not the right business for you. So I uh, immediately shifted to cooking and then, yeah. So apparently you have to be really good at math to be uh, a video game programmer. That's why I work in the visual arts. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, pretty things. I can see same. stuff. Same. I'm really good at yelling at people, so I was like, "Oh, great! I'll be a producer." <laughs> yeah, maybe, I could be, maybe I could be a chef at Riot. Does, does Riot have chefs? We do. You have, in, you have your in-house cafeteria. Yep. Damn. Yep. I see. This is where I went all wrong in life. It's true. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um. So, like, can you can you run us through kind of like a normal workday? Like, obviously not right now because right now we're not in a normal time. Right. Yeah. Pre-pandemic normal workday. All right. Uh. Let's see. Normally, like. We get it. I mean, we're, we're all like programmers slash game industry people. So we get into work at like, you know, 10 a.m. Isn't you know. it the best? It is. It is great. Um, so we'll like usually like have something that we know we want to work on right away, especially as an engineer. Like we work out of a project management tool called Jira. So it just like keeps track of all the things that we're working on, you know, um, mm -hmm. and then just 
start programming for about an hour. Then we'll have a uh, daily standup where uh, kind of my team plus the producer plus the game designer, we all like stand in a circle and talk about what we're working on that day. Um, and then usually like there will be like one or two meetings with uh, game design for a variety of things. It's like whatever it is that they need help building. Like yeah, we uh, so one of the things that's kind of interesting about uh, like the Legends of Runeterra uh, development cycle is we kind of made like a big bet on like the animation uh, special effects system, VO system compared to other games. Sure. Um, like this is not to like not to shit on other games, but like when you compare like our animations to like Hearthstone or whatever, there's like a lot more custom animations for individual cards going on in our totally. game compared to yeah. this. Freaking cool. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think Hearthstone is definitely, and this is not a a jab on them. It is basic animations. I think I think the thing with Blizzard's always been in terms of their games has been to make things as easy as they can for accessibility, which mm-hmm. is all fine and good, but also some of us just want to see some dope, some dope shit. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so like the cost that we have to pay for that is like our sets have to be like planned out and pretty much done like a year and a half in advance so that we can then hand it off sure. to the team that's going to like do all of that work. Um, so like we're actually already working on like our fifth set. Oh, you know? sure. Uh, well, I, actually, let's let's take a step back real quick because I just realized not everyone listening will know what uh, Legends of Runeterra is. Can we just I don't get know like a, Oh, yeah, sure. Let's yeah, just get a description. I mean, I, some people already have probably an idea. We mentioned Magic the Gathering and like and um, Hearthstone and stuff. So assume a card game. But yeah, run yeah. us through... Yeah, so Legends of Runeterra is uh, Riot's digital collectible card game. um, That digital only, right? Digital only. Okay. Um, It's a collectible card game, not a TCG, so you can't trade cards or anything. Um, It's set in the same universe as uh, League of Legends. Um, In terms of like how the mechanics play out, it's kind of a mix between Hearthstone and Magic. Like Mm -hmm. it has kind of like. like magic has this like really really complex stack where it's like when you're playing digitally yeah. it, it can be it can be challenging because it's like all right i passed priority wait what is what is priority i think uh, that's one of my favorite parts of this game because it makes you think like when you see your opponent stash his mana mm-hmm. you're like what's he got going on like, wait, what's so he like, got like, what's I'm he trying a... to do does he have nothing or does he have like mm-hmm. does he have a spell up the sleeve that he wants to like counter a spell i'm about to put out or something which for me, it was probably one of my favorite parts about the yeah, game to yeah. begin with. So I come from a Magic background. I've been playing Magic Gathering for for quite a bit, and I'm, I'm yeah. curious because I haven't played Ruta- Legend of Ruterra, and I'm curious when you because I, yeah, like you mentioned the stack, the stack, the stack and priority is is pretty important in terms of like who goes when, who go, what can happen, etc. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean when you say there's that that doesn't exist? Is that what you're saying? Uh, or is it, different? It, it exists, but it's it's simplified basically. Um, you know how in magic where it's like you can play a spell and then I can play a spell and then I can let that spell resolve but yes. before the stack is finished resolving I can then like play another spell. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We don't have that. We just have the stack. You can only add to it and then it resolves like all at once. Um yep. so basically like there is some amount of back and forth interaction like more back and forth interaction than like Hearthstone does like in our game you declare attackers and then your opponent declares blockers but mm. less back and forth interaction than magic does because we think that would be like problematic on mobile and like a digital platform where like you could have you just have to be waiting constantly for for your opponent. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. The first time I ever learned about the sex, truly, really, I didn't talk to my best friend for probably a week. <laughs> I, I was I was playing an aggro based deck. He was playing a a control based deck. I was attacking with this creature. He goes to kill it. I think hero's downfall, whatever the card was. Mm-hmm. I gave it indestructible, and in response to indestructibility, he he, he used a second hero's downfall to kill it to kill it. And I was like, no, you can't do that. I just gave it indestructible. He's like, no, no, no. So this this is this this is the stack. So you did that. I did this. You did that. I did this again. And I was like, no, 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 that's not how this works. I <laughs> just gave it indestructibility. And he's like, no, 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 no. Whoops. Oh, For we lost him. Yeah. All right. Well, her, real quick, real quick. One of my favorite parts, because you were saying something Sorry. about what separates your game from like other games, not the crap on other games, but yeah. like with, with one of my personal favorite things is a, as a long time fan of like the League of Legends lore and whatnot, were little things like, uh, like when the Poros come out, or when the yes. Poro King comes out, or when Brom <laughs> comes out. Anytime you level up your character, like when uh, when Darius levels up and he's like, Damasio, or no, that's Garen. When Garen comes out, he's like, Damasio, and he does his spinning blade. Like, I'm sorry, but 
I freaking loved that. Like, especially like little things like when Anivia does the attack and she does like plus one frost damage, everybody. It's like for somebody that has played the game since the beginning of it, it's really cool to see these same abilities being used in a different way. And like, it kind of, I don't know, like I, I was a huge World of Warcraft player for so long, but that didn't translate into Hearthstone mm. whatsoever. Like I yeah. didn't have that same, yeah, same. Uh, sentimental feeling, you know what I mean? And I love, I'm, I'm definitely not going to crap about Hearthstone because when Hearthstone came out, pff, I, I loved it. Oh, I yeah. thought it was a great game. Three expansions later, not the same feeling. Well, I, like, and I, it, think, I think it, I didn't get the same. That's the whole Blizzard deal. And the Hearthstone at first I thought was a really, I don't think it's not a cool, uncool game any, uh, at this point. I, I just, when Hearthstone first came out, it's just it, Blizzard did what they do. They just make the game as accessible as possible so everyone in the world can play it, right? That's, that's fine. Cool. It just, it did get, well, I thought it got boring personally. I did try it because I'm I, I, such a, I don't know, I've been playing Blizzard Dude, my whole the life. Arena. Like, the arena that you guys did in this game, I love that. Oh, dude. It yeah. So let's so talk about like, is there different that. modes? Is there different play? Uh, like, so much fun. Of play? Like, what's yeah, all the... I, I'm just hearing what you guys talk because I, I purposely didn't download it and try it because I wanted to talk about this because now, now you guys are making me want to try this game. Oh, I, dude, my best friend and I, my best friend and I played this game religiously the first two weeks that it came out. Like, I'm talking religiously. I mean, I did like the first two weeks, like the arena thing. I capped it out and then I just kept doing them like over and over and over to the point where it was like, you can't do any more of these today. <sighs> I'm like, oh, dang. Like, because it's just, it's basically like a, uh, if you guys play Magic, it's like a booster draft turn. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So, that's, that's what you, is it, is it computer right now? Is it PC only? So is uh, it, any... it is PC only with mobile coming out. We've had our mobile soft launch already uh, in okay. Singapore. And there were a surprising number of players in Singapore, wink, wink, uh, <laughs> that, that downloaded the APK outside of uh, outside of the mobile store. Whoa! Uh, but yeah, it's and it's, people in North America. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's not that I don't know anything about that. Why? Yeah. So real real quick before we move on to that, because like we there's a couple other games that we've played uh, in like in soft launch, you know, the Marvel Super War and all that sort of stuff um, that have used like Singapore and the Philippines why as is like places. Why? Why? Yeah. Why why is that? Because I've always been curious. Is that something to do with just they have access to it first for some reason? Or do you have any idea behind that? Uh, so I, I'm not like the most qualified to like answer this question. But what okay. I vaguely remember hearing was um, kind of like they are a good predictor for how things will play out in like the states. Like mm. just like the way their country works, their players like behave like day-to-day -day behaviors um so it's okay. one of the best predictors for how your game is going to do in the states um it's also a really small market so if something goes really really poorly like if the game can't load it's like all right well maybe you lost all of the player base for singapore but like from a like total numbers perspective that's not going to completely tank your game whereas like compared if we launched in the states and something was really really wrong that could just like bury our game in the ground from day one and that yeah, was like, that's an enormous risk okay americans yeah. are very unforgiving <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no that's that's just that's an interesting uh, i hadn't thought about the the market size and whatnot for i was just like oh they're just in a different time zone or something like that they're around the world they just they get the you know the first dibs with most games because that's like almost every single mobile game that gets re released gets an, released mm -hmm. in singapore first so it's like i'm always curious about how that worked out so that's a that's a good insight i hadn't hadn't thought about that yeah so what were we about to talk about? I can't remember. <laughs> we were talking about Hearthstone. We were talking about Expeditions. I can answer lots of questions about Expeditions because I'm actually man, uh, so much fun, dude. Uh, I'm the, the engineer that then. worked on the prototype for that. And most, uh, really? most of what I wrote is still in there, at least on the services side. Like the, a lot of the client code has been rewritten because like the only I, I'm going to tell you the only downside to it is mm -hmm. I feel like they're OK. So my, my best friend and I did a ton of them. Right. Yep. And it came down to the point where we said to ourselves, if you roll Timo, You've just won yourself like a <laughs> bunch of games. Now, if you roll yourself like Darius and Ash, you're in for a little bit of a struggle fest. Yeah. Like there were so many combinations, and it really boiled down to like two that just trumped everyone else. Which I don't care. I mean, it is what it is. But like there was that. Which I mean, I guess I like. For me, it was a little bit of a. Uh, a shell shock the first time I went through and it was like you could swap your cards out in between the battles you could pick extra heroes mm -hmm. to put into your deck like each time you do a win and then the one thing that I thought was really cool is like you get two losses right but if you get to the next tier it eliminates those two losses and you kind of get to start back over again 
So it, it, it was it was hard to get my first one where I won seven, but I did that a few mm-hmm. times, and man, it felt really good when I did, and it actually felt very rewarding too with what you guys handed out. So that was like another thing that I, I felt like it wasn't. Um, I'm sure maybe when it actually gets hard released, it'll there'll be a lot more monetization. I don't know, but my favorite part was the fact that I bought the what the five dollar thing that mm-hmm. came out that you came out with it and or the, the starter pack and I got everything I wanted in the game and I didn't really have, it wasn't that, that hard to get it all, you know? And so it didn't feel like uh pay to win, yeah. so to say, yeah. as maybe it does in Hearthstone where if I want to get a legendary card, pff, yeah, good, good luck. Yeah, dude. I mean, and uh, yeah, yeah that, that's definitely something that like Riot cares about a lot. I think that was part of the motivation for making this game uh, where it's like, we were looking at sort of the, um, competitive card game market and it's like why does why does every game have to be pay to win like i mean obviously we're a business we'll need to find ways to sell things but it's like what if we could try to make more money off of a like more sustainable player base compared to like a player base of just whales and uh don't even don't even get me started on uh um, uh, um, uh, Magic the Gathering Arena because it's, uh, it's <laughs> dude, it's like to get any card you want, it's such an uphill battle. It is so annoying. I was just it's saying. It's just funny to hear you. Yeah, I was just saying. I was like, I was just saying, like, thank you. Just you know, having a sensible sort of business yeah. practice, like unlike you know the games that we all play <laughs> and we talk about Marvel Strike Force. That's one thing that I've always felt about Riot. Like, I have played League of Legends since it was in beta, and like, I have never ever not. When people will say like, "Oh, League's pay to win," I'm like, "Dude, what are you talking about?" They're like, "Well, you have to be able to buy the champions." I'm like, "Dude, I got like." 400,000 blue essences yeah. and every champion in the game. Like, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. And it, that has no indication of whether or not you actually know how to play the champion in the first place. Yeah. So I, and even with team fight tactics, like I never, they, there, I don't even think there was any monetization in that game. I think there's the, uh, there's the pets that you have. Okay. And okay. Like, there's kind of like a, a gotcha system to like roll the ideal pet you want. But in terms of gameplay, and that's fine. Though. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of where riot will try to make its money i think in general is like we would rather yeah, you guys make a lot of money to, off that stuff we, we like would, that. yeah but we would rather make money off of like cosmetics than feel like oh you you want to win the game like better better hand over your wallet you know like i guess that skin made you god tier with uh <laughs> with their man or caitlin yeah. like dude i've actually like heard people make an argument about whether or not skins will make you better at the game or not and i'm like bro the, no, there, there is no, the meme no. of like the pay to win skins. There's like those few skins that are banned in competitive play because the visuals like aren't quite as good, but like it's it's pretty marginal yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get good is what yeah. I got to say to those people. <laughs> like unlike me, I'm terrible at all those. Types <laughs> yeah. but no, I got to gold, man. Gold is the highest I ever got, and I felt like let me tell you that that was like the most monumental <laughs> achievement in in gaming for me when I got out of silver. Like. That was oh man, whew. the climb out of silver is hard. I I relate to that a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, is that with the League of Legends? I guess I yeah. never played. Yes, sorry, yeah, sorry, so, yeah, 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 League, yeah. League Fox. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's, so it like in League it goes. It, I mean, okay, so in League of Legends, there's like a. I would say it's definitely a thing where like getting out of bronze is super duper hard because bronze is like the depths of hell, we'll call it in, in terms of ELO. Okay. And now they have iron, which I, I've never seen iron. I don't even want to know what that's like, but I started out in bronze and then you get to silver. Right. Yep. And for like probably three or four seasons, I would get to like my promotional series in silver one to get to gold. And you have to win like three best three out of mm-hmm. five. And let me tell you, but this became like the ultimate troll fest for me where like I'd, I'd get into my first game and somebody would be like, I'm going trend to me or top or I'm leaving this game. And you'd see somebody ban trend to me and I'm like, no, please don't do this to me. And then they leave, yep. you know, and it's like, well, there goes one game. Then the next game, it's like somebody DCs and I'm like, rip my series, dude. I didn't even get a, sh- I didn't even get a chance at this, you know? And uh that was that's, that's League of Legends in a nutshell. Oh, yeah. And it's, 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 uh, it can be tough, but when you get through it, Sounds, man, it was a good feeling. Yeah, I've, I've only played those uh, MOBA games very briefly. I mean, I've been getting more into them with uh, Marvel Super War coming to light. So it's just it's interesting. Mm. Uh, I played a lot of, I, I mean, I primarily play mobile games at this point because 
outside of a few computer games, like P- uh, games of playing on PC. Like Dom and I were playing uh, Warzone today, and it's the first it's the first game I've played on my actual PC in what feels like forever because I use it for stream or video editing or uh, color correction stuff. So like I don't really use my PC for stuff outside of work. Mm-hmm. So it just uh, I don't know. I'm gonna maybe once Super War comes out, I'll start to dive into it more often, or maybe I'll re-download. Well, Legend. you know, I'll I'll tell you what, Super War is definitely like you know, obviously it's a mobile game, so it's a MOBA like light, very light version. But like MOBAs are a tough game. I I was really into Heroes of the Storm. I never really got into uh, League or Dota just because they were too much for me. Like realistically, both those games are are i feel like if you haven't been playing that from the start you're not gonna have a good time oh yeah no the, sorry, the first 200 sorry, hours i played of league i hated it but yeah now, it's, <laughs> but now it's like my, my favorite game to play of course <laughs> and they're just they're very they're different it's like i kind of feel the same about fortnite if you didn't give them from the start you're gonna have a bad time just because it's like every one of their mother is playing it right now like league is the same way obviously like that, that game is just massive on a global scale obviously but then like the the first the actual first MOBA I ever played it wasn't any any of those games. It was a mod within StarCraft called uh, um, what the hell was it? Oh, Aeon of Storms, and it was a StarCraft based mod, a MOBA inside that like custom engine, and it was wild. And then like a couple years later, here's the storm came out, and it's a very it was also it's also a very light MOBA realistically compared yeah. to other MOBAs, and I I, I love I love playing it. I I like could, I couldn't do that too. They're too big for me. But then like obviously Super War coming out from Marvel it's on another level of light because it's a mobile game. So it's even lighter. <laughs> I, I feel bad. I don't know. If, I don't know if not everyone's playing like on an emulator on a PC emulator, but I'm just smoking it in super war. So I'm just like, <laughs> you actually do, man. Like you're actually crushing people when I watch you. play. So it. either I am actually, I am just crushing it or everyone else in the world who has it available to them is just playing on their phone. And I'm just like <laughs> hockey, hockey. Like I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'd say what though, man. You you load up League of Legends. You try. You play and you grind and you grind and then you get a pentakill with somebody like Yasuo. And I tell you what, man. You'll your heart will be just like ready to explode. Oh, yeah. and you're just like, <sighs> it's like one of the most satisfying feelings. Well, there's ever also when too many. Like, there's too many characters too. Like it, 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 like <sighs> there's like like when I was playing Heroes at this point, they actually do have a, a pretty nice roster uh, now. But like when the game first came out, there was like 15, maybe, you know what I mean? And, and they're, they're getting more, but like, I wouldn't even know where to start in league, like which character to play, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. And you have to know how basically every character in the game works. Otherwise you'll be hard punished during the game. Yeah, like, exactly. Oh, oh yeah. Why, why did they kill oh, yeah. me there? Like I have, I have no idea. Right. Know? I'm sure there's like meta metas on top of metas. Like it's just like they're, yeah, you want to know what the meta is? You use the newest champion <laughs> and you win the game. That's in League of Legends. It's like all the champs that have come out this year so far: Aphelios, who else was Set. it? Senna, Aphelios, and Seth. Yeah, they've all been very, very strong. Dude, Aphelios is gross, man. Like, ugh. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> you're the, you're our you're our token uh league uh expert like, on this like the, so. thing, the thing is about the champions in league is like they from the ins- from the very get-go right like the first champ i ever played was blitzcrank right and you have three things you can four things you can do with blitzcrank you can either hook somebody knock them up in the air go really fast or you can blow them up with an electrical shield then you got champs like uh what's the most recent one i learned how to play um well, I'll use Aphelios, for instance, right? Aphelios doesn't even have a Q, W, or an E. He, he he produces different weapons as the game goes on. And when he gets certain weapons, oh boy, you better pay attention to what weapon he's tossing around. Because if he I, uses certain ones on you, my God, dude, he will like obliterate you in two seconds. And it's like, I play champions like Caitlyn or Jinx, which are like from like 2015 and 16. And they've got like very basic yeah. kits. And so like as time goes on, the kits on the champions just get like, Oh. exponentially more complicating and there are still counters you can use from like the previous days but you got to be like 200 iq and understand like like what you were saying with league it's like you have to know every champion and you got to be thinking like what's homeboy about to do if he sucks he doesn't know what he's about <laughs> to do because he doesn't know what i'm gonna do if he's really good he's three steps ahead of me so it's like there's this whole internal mental conflict that you're doing so that's why i say it's like a very it's like chess on speed like that's what how I view league. But, so you, you yeah. play league too, Neil? Yeah. 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 I play. What's your, what's your favorite champ? Favorite champ? Do you have no, a main? Lux easily. 
Uh, oh, and I, I mean, and if anyone, if anyone's listening that is a League of Legends player, they're probably rolling their eyes because they I just they, my they, eyes. Make, they make fun of Riot for making so many Lux skins. So every time I'm in there game is. and I play Lux, they're like, "Of course you're playing Lux," you know. Did you see the Reddit Major post the other day? It was like it's been it's been six days since Lux has had a new skin, and I'm upset about it's it. It's about time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really like her. Like, I think her VO is great. Um, I like like the Star Guardian Elementalist Lux skins, and like I I have really really bad mechanics, like really really bad. Uh, and she does a really good job of covering for that, especially mid to late game, because I'll just like know where the opponent is, I'll place wards, go hide in a bush, and then an ADC will walk up, and I'll blow them out from hundred to zero, and it can win my team the game. Where it's like so yep. many of these other champs, it's like you got to press R at the right time, and then you got to flash, and then you got to land a skill shot, and like. What if I land Dude. one ability and I, and that's and that's good enough, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it sounds it is, sounds about like what I am. That's how is, I play. Is it normal a character having fourteen different skins in League of Legends? No, no. no. I think the normal no. is probably like four or five, but okay. uh, yes. Annie and Lux have like ten or fifteen each. Ezreal has yeah, Israel's got a lot. Yeah, but I mean, okay, I, I that actually I wanted to ask you. Do you know? I mean, this is a this might be a question you can't answer, but what is it that they you like? Do they have like some kind of system or uh yeah do they have a system to how they choose who gets new skins and so That's um, a very interesting question. i have i have like a little bit of insight um but not a ton you know because i don't i don't work on that team right, uh, right i right, heard right, right. it used to just kind of be chaos where it's like whoever had a good idea like you know pitched it to the product owner um and Some then, and then they're like all right we're doing that you know um these days there is a, a new product owner on the skins team that it's like, all right, you, you can pitch ideas, but like we need to use some amount of data to like, all right, these are the most popular champions. We should make skins for them yeah. because like that it, yeah, that makes sense both from a business perspective and from like like one totally. of Riot's mantras is like player uh player experience first, like serve the player. It's like, well, when you make a skin that the most players are playing, you are serving the most like the highest number of players. Sure. You know? So kind of sure. it's like I can actually see that because I mean I'm not, I'm not trying to be like like gender or whatever, but I, when I stream or when I watch League of Legends streams, I see a lot of girls play Lux, mm -hmm. like it, because she's just she's cool. Like you were saying, her the well, elementalist it's, it's, skin. It's something about connectability too, cool. like and that's that's the yeah. that's the conversation about like why bringing in characters that are a, a large diversity because there's going to be someone out there that might be uh, of color or a woman or whatever. And they're like, Oh, I can connect with this, this character because they're like me and then they play them, you know? Yeah. And I think it's very interesting. So in terms of like, I, I don't think, I don't know if we brushed over this. I couldn't remember if you said it, what were, what were the different play modes of, uh, uh, legends of Terra. Legends of Terra. Uh, so right now there's like two, basically yeah. there's constructed I think mostly, I guess. Yeah. There, there's constructed where you have, um, like, the cards you own and you can build a deck from that and then you go into a queue i mean there's several queues you can go into like the for fun queue where like we don't keep track of your wins and losses um you're just playing to have fun um and then we have our ranked queue which like borrows the ranked system from league of legends so like you rank up from iron all the way oh, up cool. to diamond up to masters um where once you're in masters you have like a this is your definitive rank in the game you are the thousandth best player or whatever you know um and then outside of constructed there is the expeditions mode um which is geared primarily towards uh new players but there's also like people like me that prefer that kind of play experience where um you're not playing with cards you own uh you are going through a process where it's like uh we show you a screen that's like here's a pack of three cards here's a pack of three cards here's a pack of three cards which one do you want um, so your deck is going to be different basically every time. Your opponent's sure. deck is going to be different every time. And the reason I prefer that to construct it is I feel like uh, it's kind of two different skill sets um, and two different like ways of playing the game. Constructed yeah. is you want to, like from round one, you have a general idea in your head how this game is going to play out because like we have 40 card decks in Legends of Runeterra. You could probably identify 37 of the 40 cards in your opponent's deck. Sure. And like and you yeah. and like it's very like repetitive, but also like you need to know exactly what to do on each turn. Sure. Um, whereas sure. in expeditions, because like your deck is basically random, like yeah. you you have to adapt to the current situation. Like every game feels very very different, um, and that's kind of why I, I prefer you have that. no idea yeah, what they pick exactly. Hmm. 
that's yeah I that's funny it. that's that's wild i mean i'm i'm taking this in i yes no i i am excited about this conversation uh i'm just uh, i'm just trying to make sense of it because like i haven't played the game yet so i don't know mm-hmm. what what it's like or any of that sort of stuff so it's just interesting to and me you don't need to know anything about the champions to play runeterra like that's one cool thing about it i mean i feel like team fight tactics did take a little bit of that like you definitely need to know yeah like, who's good at what and who kind of <laughs> counters what i mean there is a meta in team fight tactics itself mm-hmm. But in this game, uh, I mean, uh, I guess there is like kind of like a meta a little bit in the constructed play yeah. you're talking about. But like when you go into those expeditions, they're like you can't always get Teemo in your decks, even though like I was saying earlier that Teemo is one of the best people. It's because Teemo, like uh, how, how does it work? Like each time he attacks, he puts mushrooms mm-hmm. in their decks. And you could think of like the mushrooms as they they take life away from your opponent each time you draw a card, depending on how many mushrooms were randomly applied to that card in the deck. And like there's ways to just exponentially grow that. And like in this specific kind of play, it's like the best. Because I think in regular play, isn't Hecarim one of the better, uh, the better decks? Yes, the, although the, we did recently have a patch that nerfed him quite a Ooh. bit as like oh a, good he, good so he got good. We, we shifted his power around <laughs> he became a lot weaker just like by himself and a lot stronger in good. decks that are built around ephemeral units because those spectral decks man oh my god dude the, the with the spectral sharks and the and the spectral riders <laughs> it used to be i uh, can you guys see the expression yes. i'm doing right now this is how <laughs> I feel when i was fighting against one it would be like you would just see like somebody with like eight cards in their hand and you're sitting there just like yeah i'm about to destroy this dude and then he plays uh what was the other card that goes in that deck that that uh, that everybody memes about, Neil? The the one that like when you kill an opponent or when something dies, you can play the card and it revives oh, the, from the graveyard. Yep. That card used to Dude, be. You'd see somebody with like so eight much cards stronger in too. Hand. It used to be a six man of five oh. five. Now it's a seven man. You four, would four. see somebody. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> It was painful. So when, when uh, I'm just interested to talk about a little bit of what you were just mentioning about a, a character getting nerfed. Like um, when that happens, does like uh, does something like where a, a dev comes to you and says, hey, like, you know, we need to make this character a little bit less strong. Like this is what I'd like to have happen. And you go back to him and say, hey, OK, we can do that. No problem. Is it your uh, essentially is it is it different in the terms of like a dev of where like a dev comes up with the ideas and tries to implement them? It's your job to help implement them as a as a is it. um uh, engineer essentially or uh so it's actually kind of like the reverse so most of what engineers are allocated towards doing is like building new mechanics for new sets so like sure. uh, like our, our first set has a lot of different mechanics like there's the rally mechanic which readies your attack token which means you can attack regardless of what turn it is normally you can only attack once every other turn mm-hmm. um there's a bunch of like keywords of like this unit has fearsome, which means only units that have three power or more are able to block it when it attacks. Like this unit has challenger. Tell me about yeah, elusive. elusive. Uh, like like <laughs> challenger is actually a really good example of a mechanic that um, required engineering work because challenger means I attack. Um, normally, I, I attack first and then I pass the turn and then you're allowed to declare your blockers. Challenger means for this unit, I can decide who blocks it. And that's like a really scary thing to do on a game server where it's like this this player that is the attacker can decide who blocks their units. Like that's very like exploitable if you don't code it in the right way. So like that's the sort of yeah. stuff that engineers are super focused on working on. Um, and then we also build like a lot of tools that make it pretty easy for a designer to like go in and change the numbers. Um, and then we have like a scripting system that like designers are able to script a lot of cards in Python. Um, so for like what you just mentioned of like, hey, we decided to nerf this card, it's actually led um, by a designer on our team. So he'll go in and into our internal tool, change some numbers around. Um, we'll change up some Python files and then we'll send it to review for engineers. And we pretty much just are like, the, yeah, this seems safe. This looks good. Um, and is this game coded? In uh, Python? The majority of it is coded in C sharp. But we have we have an extension. <laughs> we have an extension that like uh, exposes a lot of C sharp calls into Python because Python is easier for uh, someone that's less technical to reason about and uh, make changes in. 
Interesting. Yeah, I just started teaching myself Python a couple of months ago. So I was doing that to make a war bot for MSF, but then, you know, Silver Ninja beat me to it. So then I haven't really looked into it since then. But it seems very interesting because I, I came up um, in, in computer science in college. It's originally what I was doing. I was doing digital media and computer science, and I really enjoyed the that aspect of uh, those two things back to back because i was learning you know html coding java that sort of stuff and i went down the java path i was like oh i like this i was like oh java like javascript nope totally two totally different <laughs> things uh so it was it was interesting because like i had to fast track my computer science um major essentially or my secondary major i don't know what they called it back then and so with that i was taking intro and advanced java at the same time and it was funny that i actually was able to get i aced the advanced java because it's the more is the, the the harder algorithms and different ways of thinking and i failed the basic java which i thought was <laughs> hilarious i couldn't get i couldn't grasp basic concepts but i could do apply them easily with algorithms all that sort of stuff but so i just i've been going back and reteaching myself Python. So it's interesting to hear that like you guys use a, a variety of uh, C sharp and, and Python for that. So that's kind of wild. I've... What is, what is lead coded on? Can I um, lots and lots of duct tape. Um... <laughs> <laughs> duct interesting. Tape. Uh, okay. So, okay. I mean, it is, it is older. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's been around it's, for a hot minute. I think so. it's mostly written uh, in C plus um, plus. Okay, and they, yeah. they started with like, uh, I, I don't think I'm allowed to say what game it was originally, but they started with a like, <laughs> totally random ass uh, game engine designed for an entirely different type of game and just built on top of it and got so far along that they can't turn back now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's that there's that meme Maybe. where like everything is coded as a minion. And like probably one of mm -hmm, the most like mm -hmm. egregious examples is uh, Jarvin's ult cataclysm, which creates this like giant cone like around the opponent in the way it's coded in the game. It's like, all right, we're going to spawn 200 indestructible minions in a circle. And <laughs> yeah, You're no, that's, that, that's cataclysm. Yep. <laughs> yes. Are you serious? <laughs> that's that's, yep. that's amazing. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's that's. Well, I that's I have a, we'll get we'll get back on topic real quick, but I have I have a quick question in terms of um, uh, from a dev uh, an engineering perspective. So in the game that we play that we talk about Marvel Strike Force, there's a lot of uh, issues and bugs that have been presented in the game with different. Um, this is an unfair. This is unfair to bring to it's him an, right un, now. This <laughs> is unfair, but like I'm I'm more or less curious as has because we always say like uh, we always say as us and other people who we've had on from guests and whatnot. Uh, who play the game a lot it's like oh it'd be so easy to do this it'd be so easy to do that like there's a thing where like we have save squads where it's like you can save up to 20 different squads that you can use in a different thing and they and they keep coming back to us and saying like this is it, this takes a long time to do granted we don't know what their their dev team is or their engineering team or however however it is what they have what their capabilities are right um, so I'm curious as like, without, I mean, it's, it's kind of a, it's a hard question to answer just mainly because you don't know what they're working with essentially. Uh, but in, in a sense of like, if somebody, I can't remember the game, I think it's seismic was the, was the company who, who made the game originally the mobile game and then handed it off to Fox next. And now it's being acquired by Scopely. They, um, they keep saying like, you know, we had, we are working on this, but take some time and things, you know, get broken and fixed we keep saying that there's no time for a like qa or qc or anything like that what i'm asking is like is it a realistic thing to say like you know um or actually not that i don't i forgot where i was going with that that question i, I derailed my train of thought I was, I think it was <sighs> is it hard to fix shit or are we just being babies yes exactly that is um like Obviously, I know it's, 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 it's like a different, different, it's a different scope and a different, different completely ecosystem, different thing. like different. Every, so like, yeah, a, a little easier background is like there will be something stupid. Like right now, there's a big bug um, in, in a one game mode. The normal main menu back button will pop up when it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So we're like, why is this here? This sounds so dumb. This should be so easy. Blah, blah, blah. Is a <laughs> is a like how hard is it to fix things? How long is do you like? What's the quality control? Like, what is the steps? How long does that usually take? Like, are are we being babies, or is it actually just genuinely hard? Or I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, it. I would say it's generally hard. There's probably a good reason for it. Like, dude, homeboy's sick enough for his engineers I, everywhere right I now. I can I can <laughs> give like a lot of like funny things that like now that I'm on like the other side of things that like I can see like. 
we I, I see players complain on Reddit a lot, like the League of Legends, or sorry, the Legends of Runeterra subreddit of like, oh my god, like why hasn't Riot done this feature? You know, and it's like, right. well, like we actually had a play test a year and a half ago where a rioter like identified exactly what you're complaining about and like what you're complaining about is totally right but one of the things that's really challenging is um when we're building the game like um we have to be really careful about uh being able to show it to real players and being able to get like real data um because like uh speaking frankly like copyrights are like a really really tricky thing um in video games so if like a like an overseas studio in a country that doesn't respect copyright laws at all uh, gets screenshots of your game yeah they will beat you to market with your own game you know so you have to be like super careful so like basically what i'm getting at is uh it's really hard to know for sure what is the most important thing to be building at this current moment so like even though we'll like see a problem and be like ooh we should fix that it's like all right there's already per- a pipeline going of all the stuff you're doing yeah, right and so- like what percent of players are we going to be making really happy and if we had yeah. the magic box that gave us the answer then we would 100 percent fix the thing that is the most right. important but like we have so many different player types and we're trying to make them all happy like we have Which players yeah sure. we have players that are like really really casual players that like just like the story part and like for them the best thing would be like a single player story mode or whatever and then we have the players that are like super hard competitive tournament players they don't want a story mode at all you know like they want like more tournaments and it's like okay well which thing do we build like it's sort of like a data question and it's hard to know the answer until our game has been out for long enough that we know who are the people that play our game the most who yeah. are most yeah. invested and then only then can we start to make decisions like that um, that's super and, fair in terms of like the bugs that you asked like so- sometimes um like teams are like really uh segmented so it could be that like there isn't a team that like owns this bug um a lot of times like there's bugs of an engineer that worked on the team for three years they're the only person that worked on it no one right, knows how right. the underlying system works and so it's like very very uh it would be very expensive to fix because you need to have yeah. an engineer like spend two weeks on it um and then the other thing is like the pipeline you know like my team we have a very very tight pipeline because we want to try to deliver new content at like a very set cadence to like keep up with like what hearthstone is doing what magic is doing you know so we don't have a lot of like wiggle room for like oh just just throw this thing in here you know Uh, well with that being said how big is the the legends of root specifically that game how big is that team totally and that's total not just like support engineering what do you know by any chance this is a guess but like i think it's like around 100 i'm not sure and and, and that's why i always try to give i try and like i talk a lot a lot of smack on because we play marvel strike force that mobile game you mentioned yeah i I do i do i i have my fair of complaints and blah 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 but they're a team of what you guys know like 12 people i think oh wow that's maybe maybe 20 that's really small whenever there's like these problems and they're a mobile game a, a lot of people play it they do make some good money but like, still, I don't know. I, there, there are times where I'm like, you know, this must not be easy. They're, they're, they're like working against all odds right yeah. now. And the other thing know. is, what, what phone are you using that this is happening on? Like, if, if it's an Android phone, like, good luck. You know, a lot of times there are these bugs that only happen on two of the 500 mm-hmm. devices that players are playing. It's a very good point. Like, why the hell is that happening? That's a very good point. So yeah, I, I, I would like to give them uh, some benefit of the doubt. Like, obviously, like you look at, uh, at a team in a game at riot there's teams within that 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 game's ecosystem but like you know there's probably like two dudes two people at uh at uh now well now the scopely. company scopely it was mm-hmm. uh fox next you know there's probably only a few people there working out like quality control a few people doing game design a few people doing like you know ui and and graphic and you know what i mean so it's like it must not be easy. <laughs> yeah, and you, and you said it. It's changed like studios and companies. Multiple it just times. did. They they just got bought. Yeah. Again. So 
I think are, again, you know, I, are they keeping all the same engineers? Because if they're not, like, oh my god, like you have to jump yeah. into this code base that's years old and Bro, figure everything out. That. They bought they, they Foxnix bought the, the code base basically from yeah. someone else. Oh man! And then they took the game over from there, and it has literally been like since the inception of this game, it has been bug after bug after bug. A lot of bugs. Never, a lot of bugs. They have never pushed out a patch. That has not had a bug in it. <laughs> like literally not a single time in the two years that most of us have been playing this game. Yeah, and, and it's, it's like, it's just amazing to me. It's, it's a very it. basic, like 5v5 kind of game. Yeah. So. yeah. And, but, which you, which brings in what? $200 million a year? Something like that? $190 million wow. in a year? No, wasn't it like $100 million a month or something? <sighs> no, it was $12 million no, a month. It was $12 February. million. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that's a very good point that I never even thought of before with the uh, different types of phones. You guys have to worry about two different types of computer ecosystems. Realistically, I'm sure maybe, like maybe some people are playing on Linux or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, realistically, you have Mac and PC. You're, you're building this for two different things. Yeah. Man, I didn't even I didn't even and, think about all the phone ecosystems. And, also and I the swear to God, phones. like Apple is just intentionally going after developers with their little like notch thing that they added to phones that oh, like yeah, blew dude. up oh, all of our UI. Like this little thing yes, right here? yes. I hate yeah, like every yeah. new phone has like a new like let's just like put some like little scratch yeah. marks in here just to screw with the developers. I'm know? sure I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking about that the other day because I was playing this new uh this new mobile game and it was cool because I thought I thought it was cool that it like in this area over here it didn't mm-hmm. overlap or the game like had those features still on the top of it and i was thinking to myself i'm like bro that must be like a absolute nightmare for the ui <laughs> team like or the the U- ui ux team mm-hmm. like they must it must be yeah. frustrating yeah it must be frustrating <laughs> so what out of like all the games riot's got going on what is your favorite what's your favorite to play um let's see i mean i think i'm contractually obligated to say like, i was gonna say yeah. are you <laughs> <laughs> but i mean I, so i would say legends of runeterra like definitely was my favorite game like for about like a year or a year and a half when i've been when i like when i'm playing but i've joined the team like two years ago you know yeah, and yeah. i joined the team because like i came from like a magic background like i used to play magic the gathering competitively hell yeah uh Same, I saw, my guy. oh really yeah nice. cool oh yeah um so like yeah like i was really really excited by the idea to try to compete with magic because like i think they do a lot of things great i think there's a lot of things that they could do better and i'm like hell a yeah. lot like, of things they could do like, better. like like let's let's fix up a lot of the things that like we think magic can do better um so like i was really really excited about that the content side of things on legends of runeterra honestly like i don't play that much on live anymore because i have been playing this set one for basically two years and it's designed right. to like be like at most like a six month experience eight month experience before you get tired of it so <laughs> i think once uh once our next set comes out um i'll play a lot a lot more especially because like i honestly haven't played that much of our second set like so much of our focus was on the first set because it's like all right that's going to be like a tomorrow us problem like we, we we want our game to succeed we want the best yeah. set one possible you know um so Right now, I play more League of Legends than I play Legends of Runeterra. That's but, fair. Uh, I anticipate that changing in the future, you, especially once and, we and get there. Ra- and what rank are you? Yeah, I'm actually, well, let's see, uh, I'm gold right now in League of Legends. Nice. I, I, was, I was plat four last year. Woo! I was very proud of that. That was my that was my you goal that I've been working Humble towards for, for years. Do you stream uh, or anything? Uh, I I actually just streamed last night uh, Legends oh, of Terra. Yeah. I'm too bad at League of Legends to stream, and and, and I yeah, wouldn't have yeah. anything valuable to offer. I, I feel you on that. One. <laughs> I feel you on that. One. Yeah, that's fair. Are but you? Yeah. Are, are you? I don't know if you're allowed to say it. Do you still play Magic at all? <laughs> oh yeah, I I still play Magic. I don't yeah. play like so. Like I used to like travel all around the United States playing these tournaments oh, you did, like, grand pro prix. oh you did grand prix okay I, I, I played in one pro tour i was like okay. just on like the borderline of good enough yeah. to you know compete for uh, sure but like that is such a like uh suck on your time and oh your my wallet God, that dude. like i i stopped doing it a couple years ago um Same. i basically like did it a lot in, when i was in my first job um and what was I the wasn't... last block that you uh you played competitively in mine was oh, the cons man. block I, I left. I left. So I played really heavily up until um, all of cons, like cons of Tar- Tarkir and stuff. Yeah. And then they changed the the rotation of standard. I don't yep. know if you remember that. I don't know if you were uh, still playing at that point. They made standard uh, a little shorter, if I remember yeah. correctly. Um, and they 
it really it really bugged me because I, I just lost about five thousand dollars worth of of card playability. Oh, I have a similar experience oh, to what ma- made me churn. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I think I stopped playing at like Shadows over Innistrad, and what really got me is like I was oh, a little most, bit after. Yeah, yeah. I, I was mostly a Magic Online player, and they sure. like introduced introduced uh play points and i'm like yeah great like you got to fix the economy in magic online like reward players with play points instead of packs so packs don't like packs they used to sell in their store for four dollars but they would become devalued to like two dollars and like that was not great so like everything they were doing up to that point like made total sense but then once they started selling play points in the store for cheaper than event tickets they devalued every person's account like i lost over a thousand dollars overnight Dude, they've they they've done a lot of things right over the years. The thing that I've always thought Magic Wizards of the Coast specifically, they, that's who own Magic of the Gathering for those listening. The thing that Wizards of the Coast always lagged on was their games economy. And that's both real world and like I, I guess no, it is all real world. And that when I say that I mean the 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 financial burden of players buying single single cards obviously because a lot of cards are trash a lot of cards are good blah 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 but it's always been difficult like like, you know i got in heavy competitive play around um the the guilds of not guilds of ravnica return to ravnica that was that was that was right before theros Mm -hmm. i think Mm -hmm. um these are different uh sets by the way boys um Got really heavy to then. Had a lot of good cards, expensive cards, blah blah blah. And then as I got for, I got in, going to concert here. I'm still using a lot of cards from like Theros and all that stuff. And the rotation changed so like overnight so fast that like I lost th- like two blocks between between Ravnica and yeah. Theros. And that's a lot. That was a lot of money just over time spent. Not even like I went out and spent all this money overnight. That was just time spent accumulating. Yeah. And then. You know the the and then they kept changing the for they didn't know where they wanted to sit and it just seemed like they just weren't getting a grasp of the economy. You had cards going from like a hundred dollars to like a fetch land overnight. Well, fetches are always expensive. Yeah, that's not yeah. But like you had like cards that were like hundred dollars and then overnight they were just dead. They're like yep. literally dollars and it's just like this just is not that's not fun because I I had to spend money on that. You know yeah. I had to. It is very pay to win obviously in that in that sense. But man, it it just it, it just seems like there will never be a player friendly like economy to magic and how to get cards yeah. and how to get decks. I mean, I'll defend it a little bit. I actually like don't think it is pay to win, but I do think it is like pay to play. Um, and it can exclude a large number of players that would otherwise be able to like partake in this like awesome competitive experience. Dude, I, th- I think, I think actually you did the opposite of defending them because pay to play is worse than pay to win. Uh, <laughs> pay, I, pay I guess. To, any, Cause if anyone can play, Cool. That doesn't mean everyone's gonna win. But if you have to pay just to play, that's even yeah. more difficult. Because yeah. I can go out and spend a dollar and get a trash deck. Right. I, I guess I'll, like, it'll never win. Yeah. I guess the differentiation that I'm trying to make is like I think a lot of uh like pay to win games just don't have a cap. Like you can always spend more money and you will always get more powerful. Like at least in Magic, like you eventually like all right, you have bought the meta deck. You cannot get any better by spending money. Now you must get better at the game if you want to improve your win rate but that's that's the hard thing though there will always be a counter to that meta deck and if you want to then counter that you got to spend more money that's true that's true but and I that's mean, the hard yeah, thing i mean welcome to marvel strike force <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so i'm curious are you guys are you like is there are there play uh maybe this is about you can't answer this but are there plans to like kind of turn in some of the runeterra play into like tournament slash pro series and stuff like that uh i mean i can't give like specific details but it's, yeah, it's yeah, something yeah, yeah. that we're we're thinking about something that we are uh, i guess what i can't say is we are actively trying to find more ways to uh let our players experience our game like different ways of playing legends hmm. of Runeterra. so we want to serve a lot of different player archetypes i don't think we have landed on exactly what it is we want to build or when it yeah. will come out but like we, we want there to be more for you to do in the client than just like expeditions or constructed you know okay that's fair that's very fair that's cool i'm excited to give it a try because i really want to yeah you i'm know, gonna give it a try too shit check it out i'm and especially once it goes um once it goes live uh, globally too like i'll definitely try that on my ipad and, and iphone because yeah. well. I, I played hearthstone for a bit and i, I kind of like the concept of it but i felt like i joined it and i was like maybe two years in i felt like so lost with it so i feel like I game, hearthstone? yeah so yeah, i really yeah. didn't know what i was doing or had any sort of concept of what was good what was bad they, they didn't really yeah. make the tutorials like very good because they just like okay uh and then here you go play and you're like 
Uh, what do I do next? <laughs> yeah. Like, what do I have well, to work like, on? The, the like, thing too about card games, regardless of which we're talking about, like either whether it be paper or digital, they're they're very they're not very intuitive. This shit's hard. They're hard. Like, li- li- there's a lot of uh, not just strategy, but like for like we were talking about magic before in the stack and priority and all that stuff. That is a very hard thing to grasp. That took me a, like a long time to figure that out. It took yeah. me like a while to figure that out. And then even if you don't have that exact style of stack and stuff, like these are these are you have to know you like. And we talked about League of Legends, you, but it's the same thing. R- what, regardless of what card game you're playing, you have to know what every card does. Yep. Yeah. You, you do. You have to know like. I'm gonna play this creature. Or I'm gonna play this 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 planeswalker, or whatever. I don't know if you guys have a, a similar thing or a hero, or whatever. Can they counter this? Can they kill off the bat? Will I even be able to use the ability? Like, you have to have yeah. that. You take a lot of gambles. It's 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 it's, it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. and I, I'm gonna sound like a total uh, like paid employee ad, which I shell. guess I am. Yeah, shell. <laughs> uh, but to me, like in Magic, I, I was tended to be a pretty slow player, and I felt like usually. Um, I could come up with what I thought was like the best play for my turn. I feel sure. like that's never true for Legends of Runeterra because we have How our so? timer. So, so we have our timer. So like you're limited uh, on time. Okay. Uh, okay. And different from uh, Magic, like we we don't have lands. Um, so your opponent is always drawing a real live card. So like in mm. Magic, a lot of the times in the late game, you'll like grind your opponent to Dude. a pulp. Like you'll you'll be up on cards and you're like, I know they have nothing. I can just play as if they have nothing and I'm going to win. And the Legends of Runeterra, they always have something, and oh. they always have mana because every turn you get one mana. So like every turn, even if you're really really far ahead, can be really nerve wracking because it's like we have a few cards that like are really really swingy. There's a card that says like destroy all creatures. So if you try to play one more card, you then attack with it and and like kill your opponent. You could get hard punished for that because every time you take mm. an action, your opponent has a chance to take an action. So sure. uh, that's, that's yeah, wild. Like, yeah. It is. It, there's a lot of. There's so much strategy. Involved See that kind of that's I, hilarious. Uh, Sorry, good. I found that like if you, like when I started, my, my friend and I started really grinding the expeditions. We found that like there, are cert, especially with like the Teemo deck, for example, you want to when it becomes your turn, if you have creatures on the board and he doesn't, dude, don't don't put another one on the board yeah, because attack, you're giving you him attack, a chance. Yeah. yeah, you want to attack right away. Because like you don't know if maybe he has something like that card you're talking about right there, and you just threw your whole hand down, and he's like, "Oh wait, guess what? Since I gotta move, whoop, yeah, go, all but, your cards are gone." I've yeah, that I mean that's way. actually what I but, think is um, really interesting. I feel like uh, when you start off, the very first thing you do is like, "Oh, I just always play my units," and then I like have the biggest board possible to attack, and yeah. then like the level two is like always attack when it's your turn, and then the level three is like always attack 95% of the time, except when you identify the case where, like, that's not going to win you the game anyways. You know? So I, I think mm-hmm, it's pretty mm-hmm. interesting. That's funny. I've always been uh, mostly a control player in Magic myself, so I like that late game. I like that, like, slow grind. I love yeah. that. There's nothing more satisfying for me to just board wipe uh, an aggro or <laughs> whatever. Uh, Dude, I got board like, wiped so many times it, when I'm thinking I'm about to win. It's nerve-wracking for me to think that in like in Ruterra, she's off the bat is is dangerous. Like uh, uh, you don't even, I don't know. It's very interesting. <laughs> One thing I also like is the fact that even if you have even if you have the ability to heal yourself, you do not go over twenty yeah. health. Like you're you, like I was not a fan of that in other games where it's like oh, you I have these god tier decks where like oh I have fifty life yeah. <laughs> and I very much like the fact that you cannot do that. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. But, I love it all. I, I, I that's that's what that I I tell you that I do like long games of Magic. Uh, people people used to get so mad at me, especially in Friday and Magic games, because I, I I would always have like either a Super Friends or just a standard control deck, and I would just be sitting there like take t- take taking my time, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will say to add on to what you were saying earlier about different game modes, like when you said something about there being a story mode, I'm not gonna lie, homie, that 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 would be pretty cool in this game because. League has a great story that never gets highlighted. I mean, it's League of Legends. Like, you don't have time to talk about the lore. You're sure. only caring about yeah. like, like, oh, is my champion going to be able to counter the guy? I got to go spend the next 20 minutes facing in this lane, yeah. you know, like, and, and I, and I, there is so much depth in the lore. And I feel like this is one of the first games they've come out with that actually gives it a chance to highlight it. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like there could be like something there. And I know you just like, kind of like, you know, casually threw it in there, but for me personally, as a huge fan of the series, that actually sounds dope. Like I would totally get in on that. 
but no, either either way. What's um? To, to, let, 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 I'm curious. What is your uh? What is your favorite part specifically about working at Riot at this point? Like, what is you've been there now for two years? And I think you said, what's like your yeah. favorite part about being there? Um, I th- probably uh sort of like the company mantra of like everyone uh, like that we're really really passionate about games there kind of has like two payoffs to that that i really like the first one is that all of my coworkers all love games so they're like super fun people to hang right. out with chat with play games with you know um and then the second thing is uh like i i truly do believe like riot cares a lot about the player experience and there have been previous jobs that I have had in previous games that I've played that yeah. like I wouldn't feel super like ethically comfortable like working on that like you know like uh, sort of like exploiting whales and like you know oh, sure. sorry. Sorry. Sorry, that was models. Awesome. Oh. and yeah. I, I believe Riot will never do that so like sure that's just something that, was that matters to me oh, i coughed sorry uh, he, he coughed and said facebook i think uh but that's very interesting uh in terms of um what was i just gonna say god damn it charlie's bad cough joke made me forget my thought in terms of what dom think, i don't know think, we'll, we lost it forever boys it's gone we'll lost it forever it's fine it's it'll, it'll run ba- it'll run back and whatnot so what is your what is your uh like i know you said you work on runeterra mm-hmm. specifically you work on like expeditions and things like that but like you personally like what was your favorite contribution you've made to oh do you ha- yeah do you have a physical oh damn it my thing do I have a, uh let's see uh i, I, keep, I, I think, don't know why i keep freezing i'm so sorry i think my favorite thing like actually was um expeditions mode and working on it a lot. your idea uh no it was not my idea but i was <laughs> i was the engineer that worked like the most closely with the lead designer of it um mm-hmm. and i actually like a lot of the ideas that i proposed ended up making it uh into the game um so awesome. like uh we have this system that like determines like the trades of like after every game you have a chance to swap in and out a card um i, yeah. I wrote this system that uh like evaluates what cards we think you would want to trade out and evaluates what cards we think would be good to trade in wait so those aren't just random no no it, it, it's designed Ooh. to be able to like make your deck better um yeah. and what and what we saw over time is when we first uh when we first played expeditions the best um region combo by far was demacia Freljord and like the optimal strategy was just to play big creatures because like you're picking from packs of two cards you know so we you would have these really like unstreamlined decks where synergies didn't matter um so the meta was just like everyone draft big creature decks and draft defensive tricks to try to protect them and it, in in my opinion it mm-hmm. was like pretty boring and what we have now is like night and day from that you know like now like the linear decks like the teemo deck and like the even i think the portal deck is pretty good the spider deck is really good the deck is so much like, fun, I, dude. I, I think there's a much bigger diversity of viable decks that you're able to draft in the expeditions mode that like i feel i feel like i was ma- able to make a big contribution to that um nice. i would say my joke answer was a uh, really really uh busted deck i discovered in the alpha that i managed to get a card nerfed into the ground <laughs> okay I, hear about uh, this. I mean it's it's coming back a little bit but uh, back in the day there was a card called iceborne legacy that cost five mana burst and gave a card um, plus two plus two and all cards with the same name of it plus two plus two. Um, and I was trying. Wait, they, what's that? Did they still have that kind? Do they still kind yeah, of have that? The... So it, they they reduced it to three mana plus one plus one, and we only recently nerfed it, or we recently changed it back to plus two plus two. But now it's slow. Um, and so uh, the reason okay. it originally got changed to three mana plus one plus one was because I built a deck. Originally, like that was just like my like thirty eighth, thirty ninth, fortieth card, which shows how bad of a deck builder I am. Um, of uh, Freljord Spiders, where it's like I want to build a deck around pack mentality to give all my spiderlings plus three plus three and overwhelm, you know. And I want to play Entreat to be able to always have Elise um, in play because Elise is like the card that is like sort of like your Spider Lord or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, I need a 38th, 39th, 40th card. Oh, Iceborne Legacy is probably good. I'll just always target Spiderling with that. And then after a few games, I realized, oh, this is the best thing I can possibly be doing in our game. And I just always <laughs> mulligan for it. And the deck was, because what was what made it so good was um, the designers had kind of like built in these safety valves in the game where it's like uh, these swarm strategies are really, really strong where you make a bunch of one, uh, one toughness units. 
Um, but then you can get punished by spells that say like deal one to everything, deal two to everything, right. you know. Um, but because Iceborne Legacy was burst and it gave plus two plus two, the general play pattern is against decks that didn't have these like sweeper effects, you would just win because you would be faster than them. Right. But against right. decks that did have the sweeper effects, you would develop your board, make this giant board. Uh, they would try to kill all your things, and then at burst speed, which is means like they don't get a chance to react, you just make all of your stuff bigger. So you've spent the same right. number of cards, the same number of mana, all your units survived, and they're just dead. Uh, so the deck was was very, very good. That sounds like yeah, fun. And then actually. you nerfed it to the ground. And then we nerfed right. it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I can tell you, my favorite deck, even though it's not like meta or anything like that, would be Braum with some poor... Braum, Ash with some poor oh, yeah. dude. Like, for me, it's just... It's just yeah. fun. I don't know. Yeah. Oh no. I especially the the the, the giant Poro that like takes I, in all I the love Poro Art of the Fluff. The field. It's so fun. I I've yeah. been begging our team to um the the team that is in charge of like the pets that you have on the side. I've been begging them to yeah. give like the Poro like a special reaction when you play Heart of the Fluff. I think it'd be like nice. so cool if it like jumped into the pile or something and then like came back. But who knows if that'll ever happen? The animations yeah. are great, man. I I, I will say. That's that's one thing I love about it for sure. Also, one thing, one like little quality of life feature that I really like about the game is like, let's say you do have six creatures on the board and you want to do all of them, you just click the left one, drag yep. them all up like this, boom, and then they're all on the yeah. field. Like instead of me having to be like doom, 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 like hmm. so. Yeah, that's one little thing I really liked. It's ta- I feel like it's taken a while for the digital card games to get to this point in terms of cool animations. I feel like that is something that it really adds value to the game because there's such cool creatures and spells and like lore of all the stuff and being able to see this, this animated, like, like life and like ecos, like it's, it's awesome. It's really cool. I'm, I'm excited for the day that we get that in hollow form in front of us. I just want to be, I want to be playing that on a table and like I put down a dragon and it pops up, you know what I mean? Uh, I yeah. Yeah. That, that's oh, the future. That's yeah. what I want. That's there, the future there, I want. There was like Eye of the Judgment for PlayStation. I don't know if you're like PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3 that had that. It uses the PSI and you could actually, it would do that. Like you have little card games and it was essentially the same thing with Magic. Um, and I guess Runeterra as well. But you like, you put it down there and the the cards would come to life on your screen. It was pretty roll. That's wild. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know why they never came back with that. That'd be fun. So there you go. There's, there's your next idea for a console. <laughs> there you go. I'll take, I'll take my 1% royalty. Thank you. Neil's like, <laughs> Neil's just like, try shit out. <laughs> we got, we have like, there's like 30,000 things I'm working on right now. I ain't bringing your dumb ass idea. <laughs> I know. I, I, that's totally a um, thing. Um, all right. So uh, just, I know we're kind of like running over a little bit, but I had a, a, a quick question of like, how did you get um, from was it Zynga that used to work for? Is that what it was? That that mobile game company, or is it? I, um, I I interned at Zynga when I was in college, um, and then I worked at a uh, small studio that oh, worked oh. on a, a bingo game on Facebook called <laughs> Bingo Blitz. Bingo Blitz. There you live in the dream. I know exactly. <laughs> well, now you actually are. <laughs> how how did you get from like from that to Facebook, and then be like? And then to get that connection to to Riot, was it just mainly co- like pure like right place, right time kind of thing, or were like did you happen to have a contact in there? Yeah, like, I mean, hey, ev- like everything doing- is just like sheer dumb luck. Like there's like there's people that <laughs> like sometimes ask me like, hey, like how did you get into the game industry? I'm like, I don't know. I kept trying, and eventually it worked out. Like like yeah. in, in yeah. college, like I I struggled to get like an internship until I went to some like networking event and like. I had my, my previous internship because I couldn't get anything else was at like the Southern California earthquake center doing like <laughs> earthquake modeling. And, and like the, the guy from Intel that I talked to was like, Oh cool. You want to save lives? And I'm like, yep, yeah, yep. Mm-hmm. That was exactly the reason sure. I did yep. that, you know? Um, and like, that was the Later. first time I sort of did something related to the games industry. Um, but like, so at my, at my first job, um, I had never been a backend engineer before. Like everything I had done, it was always like on client side. Uh, but when they interviewed me, they actually didn't like my client size skills very much, but really liked my backend <laughs> networking skills, which I had taken Whoa. one class in in college. So they hired That's me for that. Surprising, dude. Yeah, That's I know. Um, but like that, that studio happened to do all of their work in PHP, which like uh, Facebook uh, pr- has most of their stuff in. So when like that studio announced they were laying everyone off, within like two hours, I got a call from a Facebook representative that wanted to hire me. 
Wow. Uh, yeah, it was just okay. like totally random and totally lucky. And headhunter stuff is wild. It's yeah. wild how that happens. Yeah, and like I had been trying, I'd been trying, trying, trying to get hired by like a game studio that I really wanted to work for, and it hadn't worked out. So I ended up taking the job at Facebook, um, and then I was able to sort of like leverage that for to make other game companies more interested in hiring me. Um, yeah, man. And then for for Riot in particular. Um, I had a friend that I had met through um, playing Magic the Gathering at my local game store uh, <laughs> that worked at, at Riot and worked on Legends of Runeterra. That's and so funny. like we were just friends. He knew I was a software engineer, so he referred me, and then I passed the interview. So, you Hell know, yeah. like just like totally random Dude. things that I didn't think would have led me into the job that I wanted were like the biggest contributors, you know. Yeah. Randomly, my studio doing PHP development and then randomly meeting someone by playing Magic the Gathering. It, it's funny how, like, you know, parents would say when we were little, it's like, oh, video games aren't going to get you anywhere. And yeah. Look at it. so, <laughs> it's actually, it's video funny. games are the whole reason why I'm even in the film industry, because the first movie, well, not the whole reason I'm in the film industry, but because of where I am. The first movie I ever worked on, Charlie, was DPing, like, the director of photography. And I heard, like, video games. I was like, oh, man, you're playing, are you wearing a Guild Wars t-shirt? And I was like, oh, dude, I play Guild yeah. Wars 2. And then, boom, here we are. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's just funny how that that all works out. I mean, it, that that it. I'm I'm mainly curious about that question because it happens everywhere, and everyone's always like, oh, yeah. "Oh well, you know, you could." Yes, there are people who like go out there, they make it happen, they like are won't take no for an answer. They go through, they they are very adamant about the grind, the hustle. yeah, they, they, they go for it, and then you have people like you know, I'm in that that same boat as well, where I like you know, I wanted to do, uh, like I was doing computer science in college, and like I kind of fell into the film thing, and then. Uh, just happened to have like a viral video that blew up uh, back in the early 2000s that launched my film career. And then going from there, it's just like, you know, g getting, uh, I went bankrupt multiple times living in New York because I ran out of money because it was so expensive. I didn't know anything. And then just happened to get a random phone call to work for a DP who is now like one of the biggest directors, you know, in the, in the TV world. It's, it's, it's just wild how there's the most random things that, that, that happens. So it just goes to show that networking and meeting people and having a good attitude and work ethic is very important. Yeah. So, so if that's, if anybody's ever struggling and trying to figure out something to do, I don't know how things are going to go for job hunting in these times. Yeah. So with, uh, Corona. Yes, Charlie. Please tell me. <laughs> yeah. Please give me more insight on this. Is like we're going to need you to uh, have lost my. You're going. We're going to need you to have some uh, some good work ethic, Crondo. So. Yeah, I, I need some good work ethic. Yeah, what it create? What it, it's very interesting. Yeah, it, interesting. I'm not gonna get into a very interesting time to be, <laughs> to be a worker in the world, right? Yeah. yeah. So, because uh, you know, if the things don't uh, settle down or pick back up within the next, you know, months, couple of months or so, like I'm gonna be in that situation where I'm gonna have to take me doing Python a little bit more seriously and teaching myself. So <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, uh, do we have any other questions for Neil that we want to talk about? Yeah, there were a couple we questions. Uh, well, I was going to say before uh, we get into our, our oh. community questions. It's only, it's only a couple anyway, but yeah. Let's bring okay, that. cool. Cool. I feel like I got all my, my answers or questions answered. What's oh, yeah. uh, Dude, I, I, I want that story, <laughs> man. That, uh, every time you said that, I'm sitting here like stuck on it. Like I've been oh, sitting no. here thinking about it. And I'm That's like, crazy. I'm like, man, that would be tight, right? Like. If you could like go through and you'd have to actually like fight through the legions of Demacia and like have to like or or defend you know the Freljord or I don't know like that that sounds actually really freaking cool. Well, like, like I said, those are just examples know, of but... things we could build. I know, I know, I know, I know. Theory so, crafting. Know. It was just, crafting. It was just one of those yes. things. Yeah, maybe I'll go do it myself. <laughs> there you go. There's your job application. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Um, so uh, I came up with this new game uh, story mode for. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Wiki Wolf asks, were there any funny bugs on your journey? I don't know if that means like game bugs or like oh, yeah. get, navigating this like game world or what, but any funny bugs in your journey? Oh, let me think. There's a couple. Um, I think the funniest bug, and I, I wish I could say which champion it was for, but that champion is in a, a set that hasn't been released, so I'm not allowed to say. Sure, um, fair enough. But uh, it is a champion that you would not at all associate with camouflage, but when that champion attacked, it would disappear from from the board state. Um, and it was just this really, really sneaky uh, champion that was not designed to be sneaky at all. Uh, that was probably That's my true. favorite one. Um, I think. So you're talking about Alex? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I don't know. I just try to think one of the most bulky characters. It's not Braum because Braum's already yeah. in the game. Um, 
let's see i mean we had some like uh infinite loops that like infinite card combo loops that we had to disassemble because they just like they weren't made... supposed to be infinite yeah we didn't we didn't realize they were infinite combos until someone blew up our play test with them um yeah and i love it i love infinite combos they, they would eventually um it was uh let's see it was with a card in the future as well as a card that exists right now um the card that exists right now is the card is whenever your ally survives damage you give it plus one plus oh um it used to say plus one plus one and that re that resulted in an infinite loop where like eventually it would our, our game server would be like all right that's enough and then send send everything down to the client but then you'd see the client just like shoot laser beams of buffs flying everywhere as like wow. it's it's resolving and yeah that's it, was, it was pretty entertaining oh actually i have another good one um so we used to have a different um teemo puff cap animation where rather than coming up once, it would you would draw your card, or you would they would actually be real physical cards, and you would draw them one at a time, and they okay. would just like you draw them, and there's a mushroom pop, you draw it, it's a mushroom pop, um, and when we go to the end of game screen, it's a it's a Unity project, so the end of game screen just sits on top of the game. The game hasn't been deallocated yet. Oh, okay. Um, and so you would, would die. Animating? You would die to mushrooms, <laughs> but then the mushroom cards would keep coming up and popping through through your end <laughs> of game screen. It just was like so. Oh, it was like man. so on character for Timo. It's like no, you're not done yet. And like and That's Timo's VO just like kept talking nonsense as you already died. Oh, and it's could so annoying, guys. Let me like, tell you. you. Oh yeah, yeah. You, oh, okay. <laughs> you could leave, but it was still just popping up. The team Timo decks are like one of those things where it's like your impending doom is yes. approaching yes. and you know it and there's nothing you can do to stop it like you just feel it slowly happening and you're like please play dude if i draw one card i could actually win this game and then you draw a card and it's like oh wait this is the one that had three shrooms and not two. Oh, i lost son of a bitch yeah yeah team yeah. can be team can be very frustrating and the, uh, the other one from uh guaco loco uh, not really, I don't, I, I don't know if this is spoilery, spoilery for you to answer, but he said, what's up with Valorant? Is it going to be as good as I've heard? Which I think we've all heard that it's going to be good. And if there's any in, insider really info, good. it's going to be good. Uh, I, I hope Have it's going to be good. Uh, I actually haven't played it. Like competitive Did, first person shooters that? are like not my thing at all. Like gotcha. the okay. total opposite of my thing. Um, and the internal play tests that we had were at like a really inconvenient time for me. So I just never got in on them but like i do know that like we have a lot of people that have made like a lot of uh games in the past that like i fanboy like crazy over like i think like this is either like the lead engineer of halo 2 or one of the lead engineers of halo sure. 2 is like working on valorant and it's just like yeah awesome. Dude. yeah like i it's huge well, halo 2 like yeah. that game yeah. is one of my favorites Dude, halo 2 is the best yeah. man um so Halo 2 and Goldeneye were just the, probably like the only shooters I've ever seen. Yeah. Well, that, that, that question brings makes me think of a question. In terms of internal playtests, are you all allowed to play internal like like playtests in the in the company? Um, it kind of like starts slow and builds out. So like um like I'm on the gameplay team, so like we are working on like future sets. So we actually start with um just like our immediate team. So like the designers sure. just played together because like as you expand outwards, there is a decreasing level of tolerance for like bugs and nonsense and right, low right, quality, right. you know? Um, so as it gets higher and higher quality and closer and closer ready to ship, we will have more, involved more people in the play test. So like when we were working on a new set, it's usually just the few set leads and then it's the whole design team and then it's the whole design team plus engineers. And then it's Dang. all of our team. And then, maybe we'll sometimes be um, I, all of all of riot probably just as like a last final sweep to catch any bugs that we might have sure. missed um and then it will you know go out to players and so for for like valorant and for those other games you know like they worked internally for a really really long time and only once they were ready did they have like the company-wide alpha right well you know i'm sure i'm sure it's an exciting time to be a part of riot with with like you know what rune terror came out in the end of last year like middle of last year oh yeah valorant out at some point soon it's definitely it's definitely i mean obviously league of legends is always as big as it is, is going to be but it must be an exciting time to be a part of riot because there's a lot of cool stuff going on yeah when we had our our uh l10 anniversary like 10 year anniversary celebration of league where we like announced all of our games all the things that we had work had been working on for years man that was one of the best best yeah. moments of the last few years i'm sure that's My exciting friend. man it's cool like 
I, your story is really cool because like you already liked playing card games and you're an engineer and now you're playing you're you're an engineer for a card game it's yeah it's, 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 i'm happy for you that's really cool Th- thanks yeah. for thank you coming on and telling us that story that's awesome yeah well thank thank you guys for having me uh it was fun yeah of course and uh if you want you can uh, do you have any so i meant to ask you this before i totally uh was a you know a bad person and didn't ask you is there any <laughs> uh any socials you want to give out there like hey, if you you're streaming people? now right? sure i i will give plug, you streaming i'll plug my uh my twitch stream it is twitch.tv slash neil n-e-i-l underscore a-n-d-e so neil Wait, n-e-i-l underscore a-n-d-e Awesome. Well, we will uh, we'll put the that link in the description below, and we'll also we'll follow you on our podcast um, Just gave channel, you and then oh, hell we'll yeah. give you uh, we'll host you as well. So that way, it's we have everybody who comes on and is a, is a you know a guest on our podcast be add to our, our our hosting rotation. So if you're on, um, it typically how that works out. So you know, cool. thank you very much for coming on and being a part and talking with us about your experiences at at Riot Games, man. It's uh, it's it's cool. Like you know, I knew that you know. Me working in the film industry, you work in the game industry. We have some cool people who work uh, in our family. Yeah, we have some cool stuff. So, but yes. humble <laughs> brag over yeah. there, man. I'm a little child, dude. Child, Dang. Child, that's, that was a cool humble brag. I, I'll take it. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't humble brag no. very often. So, I just, I just, I had to say one thing. This is funny on your on your Twitch. The very end, your little disclaimer. <clears throat> if you'd like to offer balanced feedback, you're welcome to share. But please know that I'm not someone that can meaningfully take action on it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's people's <laughs> favorite topic, so I just like, I don't know. I, I want them to know what my answer is going to be before they ask the question. Dude, totally. I, I don't blame you. I'm sure. Yeah, that's something to deal with. Yeah. Hey, man. Thanks for thanks for working on a quality yeah. game because I think, dude, I, I've played so many trash games over the last <laughs> years and I definitely, Runeterra's, I'm excited for when you guys actually like release it because it's, it's still yeah. in beta technically, yeah. right? Still in beta. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We'll be we'll be on the lookout for more of that. Maybe I'll download it and maybe stream it. I'll definitely be streaming some Valorant, so we'll see how that. Oh, will definitely, so yeah, yeah. That'll 100%. be a good time because I, I think that uh, open beta is what in a week, the tenth. Yeah. I think April tenth. Yeah. yeah. So I know they're doing a closed beta right now, which happened started yesterday, I think. So, mm-hmm. but I'm curious to see um, how that all comes about. So anyway, thanks, uh, thanks again, Neil, and we'll uh, see you guys all next time. I guess we'll see you then. With right. next time next time is tomorrow <laughs> next time is no technically we're not doing the podcast until monday wait what we're streaming monday. tomorrow though right we're streaming yeah. tomorrow yes okay sorry but anyway anyway thanks again catch you guys later cheers bye